So for triangular MPP2 paper 1 question 3 is actually a function questions. For question A, it asks us to sketch the graph for function G. Function G is actually a linear graph, a linear function, which is 3x minus 5, and the restricted domain is between 0 to 4. And we need at least two coordinates to sketch the graph for a linear graph. So for a normal linear graph, we need at least two coordinates. So we can just draft up, allow me to enlarge. So uh, the first coordinate I can know is actually my y-intercept. My y-intercept is actually negative 5 here. So I can just put it negative 5 here. Negative 5 when x equals to 0. And another coordinate I made, I might take the largest domain, which is 4. So when I sub 4 inside, I should get 7. So I can start to plot my gx graph, which is here should be my negative 5. Here should be my negative uh, here should be my positive 4 and here may be my 7 so this might be my point so it's from negative 7 to 5 yeah this is my gx graph so in order to uh, sketch the g inverse graph we actually uh, no need to know about the functions and no need to find a new set of coordinates you just need to flip or reflex the function that you have sketched uh, with the line y equals to x so we need to sketch the line y equals to x so line y equals to x looks like this it's around 45 degree and it's in exam you should draw a dotted line y equals to x okay so you should draw a dotted line y equals to x. So, and when you reflect, your coordinates will also be reflected. So your x, your y-intercept for your g function is actually negative 5. So it will be changed into your x-intercept for your g inverse functions. So negative 5 is your y-intercept, it will be changed to x-intercept. So x-intercept will be negative 5. And your coordinates here is actually 4, 7, right, just now? You got the coordinates 4, 7, and the, I said the coordinate will be also reflected, so uh, also be inverted. So 4, 7 will be changed into 7, 4 for your inverse functions. So you will get a function which is 7, 4. 7 might be here. Yeah, just let me do sketch a graph first. Okay, then here might be a 4. Okay. So, this will be a G inverse graph. That's all for your graph sketching. You get two marks. One mark for a GX graph. One mark for a G inverse graph. Then we will continue with uh, question B. They ask us to state the domain for G inverse. So when we focus on our graph, for G inverse, so I to highlight the graph of G inverse, the domain will be between negative 5 and 7. Yeah, negative 5 and 7. So the domain of G inverse actually is between negative 5 and 7. So negative 5 x is between negative 5 and 7 will be your answer and you obtain one mark for this and for the last question c they are ask us to find the value of x such that gx equals to g inverse x so we need to get the function for g inverse x so to obtain the g inverse x functions we change the function the x in the in uh, function into y so 3y minus 5 equals to x and we ex uh, express y in terms of x. So y will be equals to x plus 5 divided by 3. So this will same 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 as your g inverse. So your g inverse x will be x plus 5 divided by 3. So your gx is actually 3x minus 5 equals to your g inverse is x plus 5 over 3 so 
solve your answer then you should get answer uh, solve the equations then you should get answer 9x minus 15 will be equals to x plus 5 8x will be equals to 20 x will be equals to you get just take 20 divide by 8 you should get 5 over 2 or 2.5 okay so your x should get 5 over 2 so for this kind of questions you get one mark when you equate the equations and you try to equate the equation you get one mark and you get a final mark when you get answer that's all for question three we'll see you in question four later bye